there is life after HIV. You realize that there is life, that you know you can continue. Watu sahi wana nikubali, hata sahi tunakula pamoja na watu. Nyanya naona maisha imebadilika. Over time, people living with HIV and AIDS have come out to speak openly about the reality of living with the condition. This public disclosure has significantly contributed in reducing stigma and discrimination besides proving to be a powerful tool in breaking the silence. It has also helped individuals overcome fear and prejudice. In Kenya, statistics show that women are at a much higher risk of becoming infected with HIV and AIDS. This scenario is attributed to a number of factors, key among them being social injustices perpetuated by the patriarchal systems in the society. For every five Kenyans who are infected, three of them are women. And uh, women also suffer a lot of injustice because of our uh, patriarchal systems in, in, in the community. So that they are not uh, part of the decision-making instruments in the community. And uh, the, ideally they have no one to protect them. And that is why the project focused on women and, and children because of their vulnerability. Previously, the fight against HIV and AIDS was for long hampered by many obstacles, including negative traditional beliefs, some of which linked it to witchcraft. Many of these obstacles have since been overcome through communications and outreach programs led by the government and the civil society. One such institution is the Women Fighting AIDS in Kenya, WOFAC. The organization has since 1993 given support to women who have experienced rejection, stigmatization and discrimination as a result of being affected or infected by HIV and AIDS. In 1992, I attended a meeting in Amsterdam for HIV positive women and this really encouraged me to come up with a group of women in, in Kenya that would support other HIV positive women because I remember the time I was diagnosed it was more or less a death sentence so when I attended this conference it actually encouraged me Monique Tondowi, a mother of one, is a living testimony of the unique challenges that people living with and affected by HIV and AIDS have to contend with. When I came to Warfak, I found that there is space for me to express myself better. I felt I could talk freely. This is, these are people, you meet other women, you meet other people living with HIV who have not disclosed to someone else. You have this secret and burden you are carrying over and over and every time the community your friends, you hear how they talk about people living with HIV and here you are, you already know your status, you are wondering are these the right people I should disclose to? So really this, is, this was a space where I could be able to express myself, where I could cry and laugh. I mean, I felt like HIV has really destroyed my life, like I have no future anymore. But coming to Warfak, talking to others, you realize that there is life, that you know you can continue, that HIV is not the end of the world. And the first thing I realized actually what is killing people is silence. And if I start talking, then I think I can be able to help many more. Action Aid International Kenya is involved in a unique project that is supporting women and children who are living with HIV and AIDS or are affected by HIV to live a dignified life. Action Aid International Kenya is partnering with Wolfak on a unique initiative in Bumala in Busia County. This particular project has seen um, a, tra a journey of, of, of women and children. Uh, women being able to move from the moment when they, they, they know their HIV status uh, to be able, who have been able to overcome stigma as a result of the interventions that uh, this project has, has undertaken and have been able to move on with their lives. They have been able to engage in, 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 in businesses, they have been able to engage in farming and, uh, and also change the attitudes of their, their community 
that uh, HIV AIDS is, 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 is not a strange disease, it is a disease like any other. They have been able to overcome that stigma. The project's key activities include food baskets for child-headed households and old guardians, vocational training for older orphans and seed fund support for women living with HIV. This project began because uh, in this region there are a number of um, cultural practices that are harmful and that uh, increase the risk of, of HIV infection. Um, we have wife inheritance, the high number of women who are widowed in this particular region and they have been, they have suffered some injustice. Some of them have been disinherited you know, from their homes after their husbands have died. And then we have a large number of orphans. The program has also put a number of older orphans who find themselves heading their homes on, um, in, in training and that means that they have been, you know they are able to sustain themselves so that they are not reliable they're they are not relying wholly on, on what the project is providing. From the far flung village of Jera in Nyanza comes an inspiring story of resilience and determination. Helen Mandela, a widow and a mother of four children, triumphed over despair and hopelessness after benefiting from the seed fund with a startup of 4,000 shillings which she invested in a vegetable business. Area hii mimi ndio nilikuwa wa 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 ugonjwa wa virusi kwanza. Area hii yote. Hata mama wamekufa na hiyo ugonjwa lakini hawakuwa wanajua. Lakini mimi bonanga alipokufa walijaribu kunifukuza hata kwa bomu. Kusema ya kwamba wewe malayo umetoka huko Nairobi na ugonjwa. Ni wakati nikuwa napereka hii vitu kwa nini? Kwa sokoni, watu walikuwa nakataa kununua kwa sababu walikuwa nasema huya kuna ukima atatuamukiza. Watu sahi wananikubali, hata sahi tunakula pamoja na watu, hata sahi biyashara watu naona watu wananunua kwa sokoni. Hata hapo nyumbani naona tuku pamoja sasa, naisaongea na watu. Ukiona mutu hamedofika mwili kapiso, siseme ni maleria, hamerogwa nini, hakuna kurogwa siku hizi. Siku hizi uwenye uwende kufanya nini, uwende upimwe, utaruti sawa, kama mimi. Hebu niangalia saa hii ni kona jembe, ni natoka kulima saa hii. E, vitu yangu mimi na jiusia, siomba ombi mtu. Viona Waridi is 21. She's among 14 girls who benefited from a hairdressing course and now works at a salon in Kibera in Nairobi. Uh, saa hizi maisha naona ikiwa sawa sana. Naona ikiwa sana, sasa ni hile tu, sasa ni jipange tu. Mm. Simbaya sana, juu ile ilikuwa ngumu sana. We ungeweza kunya uji ya muhogo bila skari. Na ija mixiwa hata na maindi hata na mtama. Watu wafa kina shukuru sana. Na shukuru sana. Manaki wa mentua mbali. Singe kuwa hapa kwa wakati huu. The program has offered support to beneficiaries, enabling them gain acceptance within their societies and positively live a normal life. There is something that can be done that there is life after HIV and that with the support of all the relevant authorities that people can live when they are taken care of and also when they accept that uh, they want to live. Actually it also brings a, a component of rights-based approach and, and this is basically to, uh, to empower the community to, be, to know their rights and to be able to claim their rights from uh, the, the government so that they have better health facilities, they, have, uh, they, they can access school, they can access uh, their land which is their right, and that injustice can, you know, they can be able to get their justice as a result of this inheritance. Also just to, re to, to tell people living with HIV AIDS to come out, it is only the virus that is in our body, but we are like anybody else. There are other diseases that are really um, life-threatening, so I, I don't think HIV AIDS is one of them. It is a chronic manageable disease. I think it is something that you can you can live with as long as, as you can, because I have lived with the virus for over 25 years. To see widows spend more time on economically meaningful activities, to see orphaned children go to school happy after a hearty meal, to witness communities embrace people who were once spurned and shunned for their HIV status. This is why public confessions have endured as a manifestation of society's endeavor to change perceptions and recant its prejudices.